Last May 2020, I stood in front of a room just like this with a bunch of gym operators who had no idea who I was, and I made them a promise. I promised them that I could help them build a world-class, high-performance culture in their personal training department that would be profitable for the gym owner without ever having to offer a discount or making any kind of front-end offer that got people in the door. I'm here today, as Don told you earlier, because I kept that promise. And what I want to do with you today is I want to take you through a little bit of my story as to how I knew that that was the truth about me, how I knew it was the truth about our team, and how I knew that we could do it with Don. And we're going to talk about how marketing played a role in that. And yeah, I don't use clickers very often. So here's my story, some of it. I left clinical practice. I was treating patients in my chiropractic office after being a personal trainer for 15 years. I started my personal training career at a little, little go, uh, world gym by my house. I left the day that I sold a bag of steroids unknowingly to a member from behind the front desk. Guy came in, gave me $700 for a gym bag. I said, we don't have gym bags. He said, you do for me, it's under the front desk. I said, this is my last day working here. I got myself a job at Equinox and quickly became one of their top trainers, not only locally, but nationwide. Got to be full-time at their club in just under five weeks, and if you know anything about how long that typically takes, it's six months if you ever get there. And I did that without ever having any of the guts to sell more than six sessions at a time because I couldn't fathom people spending on me what those sessions cost. I was still living with mom and dad. Found myself a little bit uninspired by that industry because I kept on running into taking my clients upstairs to the physical therapy suite and saying, what do I do with this person? Barry Ehrenberg, for example, had ALS. Came to me because he didn't want to die in a year. I had no idea what to do with that. I had another woman come to me who had frozen shoulder. I took her upstairs. What do I do with her? Work around it. What about this guy with a knee issue? Ah, he's getting old. This can't be the best. So I went to chiropractic school. I'll fast forward you a little bit. My clinic ended up being a place where people would fly in for appointments. Talking about Johan, who flew out from Finland. He called himself the refrigerator because that's the amount of mobility that he said that he had. Flew out from Finland to New York, Long Island, New York. After just a few years, we had service over 10,000 people from around the world. And coaches, trainers, started asking, what are you doing? How can I learn how to do what you guys are doing? We started educating trainers. Soon after that, Sam actually in the back of the room, Sam, want to raise your hand? Sam was the first trainer for us who, went for, who was working in someone else's club who went from making $500 a month to over $8,000 a month in less than six months of working at it. Just going to fix you a little bit. She's fixing me. Oh, is that better? All right. So she was the first one. And then gym owners started asking, hey, I have one trainer on my staff who's making all of this money, and the rest of them are really struggling. What are they doing with you? How can I learn? So we started educating gym owners on how they could facilitate having these kinds of staff in their gym. Quickly, we started to gain a lot of traction because these trainers are making more money than anybody else, solving the kind of problems that trainers generally cannot solve. I want to give you a hard truth. This is not going to make me your favorite person in the room. The reason health insurance doesn't cover gym memberships and personal training is it's not valuable enough. It is not valuable enough. Health insurance companies are the largest actuarial companies in the entire world. If they thought they could save one penny by ensuring personal training sessions that are happening inside, that are happening inside of your gym, they'd fund it. How do we change that? How do we change that? The reality is that right now, to get a personal training license to get started, you need a high school degree and a few hours out of a textbook. And we want health insurance companies to pay us for that? We need to do better first. We need to look inward first. When COVID hit, Sean Cleary, who's our media guy, where is he? I don't know, he's somewhere in the room. He ran in one day and he says to me, hey, this thing is real. It's coming and nobody's paying attention. Everyone's friends on Facebook are saying it's fake and it's coming. We gotta get these gyms ready, these coaches ready. Let's shoot a video. So we shot a video. Told him it was coming down the pipe. Told him it didn't matter what your friend Tim on Facebook thinks. He's an accountant. It's coming. COVID came fast, it came hard, as you all know. 
And we had big plans. We had seminars set up for around the country where we were going to be educating coaches and gym owners. And instead, we turned that into a film studio where we started to give our content away. And in that year, we gave away over a million and a half dollars worth of free content that we no longer had the ability to sell because we knew that the market needed it. Is that marketing? We didn't think that it was at the time. We were just trying to help. But as it turns out, people really appreciated that. And it came back around. I ended up at the talk last year at Newtown Athletic Club. Don was in the room. And the truth was, I had nothing to sell. We did not have a program for commercial gyms. We knew we could make it work, but we didn't have a program. When we were talking about what it would take, we were talking about how to treat people, the members, the staff, the management. It wasn't about you know, this marketing campaign or that marketing campaign. It was about treating people a certain way. So Don took a chance on us, and things went well. I guess that was marketing. Who knows what the best-selling book of all time is? I heard it. The Bible. What is the Bible? Stories. stories. The Bible is a series of stories. I'm behind on my slides. OK. This is the success criteria for our talk today. If I failed to do these things, I was unsuccessful. If I achieved these things with you, we were successful. Number one, you understand the value of storytelling as marketing. Number two, you can follow the five rules for effective storytelling that I'm going to lay out for you. Number three, you are compelled to evaluate the quality of your service. Number four, what you learn is actionable immediately. You go home tomorrow and you can use it. And finally, we have some questions and some answers before this thing is over. So let's get into the rules of effective storytelling. The first rule is that your stories should be true. Too often what happens is we see these stories of ambition. You're all marketed to in this way. You could get it fast. You could get it quick. You could get it easy. When the reality is nobody got it fast, quick, or easy. And you know that. You know it's not true. So you're not interested. You lose faith right away. Your stories should be true. Number two, for people to take any action at all, two things must be true for them. The reward of the action needs to be worth it. And the action must be likely to lead to the reward. Think about that for a second. If I told you all I have a million dollars for you, all you got to do is beat the UFC champion in the heavyweight division in a fight tomorrow afternoon. Who wants the million dollar shot? Nobody. But who would like a million dollars? Some of you guys aren't sure, huh? OK. The million dollars, you want that, but it's got to be likely that you're going to get it, or you're not taking the action. Right, so the reward needs to be worth it, and the action must be likely to lead to it. That goes for both your clients and for your staff. How do you get a trainer to work really hard, to take education, to charge these kinds of prices, to go through all of this process, and then not steal clients from the gym? Steal clients from the gym. You make it worth it for them to stay. You make it easier and more inspiring to be here than it is to be somewhere else. People only care about your stories if they're relevant to them. The more that you can talk about them and the less that you talk about yourself, the better. The reason I talked about myself for a moment in the beginning was so that you would believe me. So I would have some of your trust for just a moment. The rest of the time, focus on the person you're talking to. Why is this story relevant to them? Number four, and this one's important. Not that the other ones weren't. Allow people to qualify or disqualify themselves. If any of you in this room end up deciding that you're considering working with us, you should know we are the most expensive company in the market who does what we do, and we are the best. And it's not close. If you're looking for a deal, 
with the wrong company. That allows you now to know if we're going to talk about something after this is over another day or whatever the case might be, it's going to be a financial bullet for you to swallow that will pay off. But we don't do discounts and we don't do deals. Now, I don't have to worry about anybody coming to me after this and saying, hey, can, can, can I do this for, can you do it for this price? No, no, I can't do that already. You're not going to come to me with that. Save me time. Understand this, there are people who are going to come and talk to you who are going to kick the tires in your businesses. You know these people, right? Does it give you more energy or less energy when somebody walks through the door who you shouldn't sell to? You know you shouldn't sell to them, but you got to meet your quota. You want to make the deal. And then they're like, ah, I don't know, this is too expensive. I don't, I don't want to do this. More energy or less energy? Christina, you're smiling. More energy or less energy? More energy. Gives you more energy? Sorry. Yeah, it costs you more energy. Okay, stop them from coming in. We're not for everybody, and we're perfect for somebody. So if you're that somebody, we need to be talking. If you're not that somebody, we'll find you someone else who is. Believe it or not, we refer more business out than we take in. Five, be consistently remarkable. Who knows what remarkable means? Worth remarking on, that's exactly right. Not to be confused with excellent. Just be worth talking about. How can you be worth talking about? The interesting thing is in the fitness industry, it's by doing what you promise people you're going to do. You can lose a bunch of weight here, help people lose a bunch of weight here. You can get more athletic here, help people get more athletic here. Show people that you did it. That's remarkable. Most people are used to be solding Optiva or the Nutrisystem as a quick system to get them out of, out of their weight problems, only to gain more of it back later on. Let's watch this video from this gym right here. My name is Barbara. I'm a mom of a two-year-old. I'm 34, and uh, I had never been to a gym before. I started bringing my daughter to swimming classes here at Gold's, and that's when me and my husband found out that there was a daycare here. Initially, I thought I was just gonna do swimming because I had never been to a gym before. I found out that the enrollment included sessions with the trainer, so that's how I met Shannon, and that really, really helped me because if I hadn't had that opportunity, I'm not sure if I would've consulted with the trainer or just, you know, maybe I would've just been doing swimming this whole time because I didn't know how to use machines, I didn't know how to do anything at the gym. In the beginning it was a little hard because I really wasn't used to doing any kind of physical exercise so I, you know, I felt it. <laughs> but then as time went by I started really enjoying it. So I always looked forward for the next session and the next session and I also would come by myself during sessions so I really started feeling a lot better. This is one of my favorite marketing quotes. The most powerful element in advertising is the truth. So, what had to be true for that video that you just watched to exist? I believe that great marketing is just the documentation of excellent service. That's it. It's not creating something, it's not amazing offers, it's something amazing happened. Here it is. So let's start talking. What needed to be true for that video to exist? I'll give you the start. Was it shot on an iPhone? It was not shot on an iPhone, but th that's okay. So it was, it was, was it shot into the light? Was the lighting good? No. The lighting wasn't good on the video? All right. It wasn't good on here. All right, it wasn't good on here. I gotta be a better marketer. So here's the deal. That was a professionally shot video. Does every video need to be professionally shot? No. Is there a sacrifice when it's not? Yes. Number two, Maria came into the gym. For what? What did she come in here for? Swimming. You guys listening? Or Barbara? For swimming. for swimming for her kid, not even for herself. So what happened? How did she end up with a trainer? Anybody remember? She found, she found out she could get a session with a membership. And then what did she do? She went over to the board, she didn't tell you this in the video, and she scanned the trainer who had the best content on their screen for her. What had to be true for that to happen? All the trainers must have gotten together and put on their, on their board what it was that they were special at. Then what else had to happen? She had a QR code. The 
QR code had to work. It had to link to a schedule so she could book a time with the trainer. What else had to happen for that to be true? The trainer had to update her schedule. What happens when the trainer updates her schedule? The personal training manager can see how many sessions they have scheduled for the week, how many sessions they have scheduled for the month, start forecasting what the results for the month are going to be. Help the trainers who need the most help, and all of that gets them more clients. That's marketing. Let's evaluate some of the services that are going on in your gym so that you can identify areas that you can improve and leverage. The reason why we put a consultation in place is because we believe people should get help with how they use this gym. We would love for everybody who comes through the door to do a consultation. Now, one of the reasons for that is because we believe the consultations are excellent. I want you to imagine a scenario in your gym. All of your trainers are on a little ping pong ball. Each of their names are on like a lottery ball. And pick your favorite big wig celebrity in your local area who has all the following in the world walks in and they're like, I, know, I would like to get a personal training assessment. Are you comfortable spinning the hopper and pulling a trainer out and saying this is the person who's gonna give it to you? Are you comfortable with that? Give that some thought. Okay, why not? What needs to change? What of that can you change on your own? What of that do you need help changing? What of that do you want to change? What of it are you okay with? Play that scenario out a million times. For every aspect of the service that you provide, when you really put the microscope on it, are you proud of it? Is it something that you want to market? Because the fastest way to drive a business out is with great marketing to a substandard product. The best way to grow a business is with exceptional documentation of great service. The success criteria for this talk. You would understand the value of storytelling. Is anybody still unclear on why storytelling is the way to go as it pertains to marketing your product? Anybody still unclear? Anybody unsure what the five rules to follow are for storytelling? Anybody not compelled to look at their business and say, where can we improve? Anybody feel like what they learned today is not actionable yet tomorrow? By the way, raise your hand if this is the case. I want to work it through with you. Okay. Well, then the last success criteria is that you ask some questions and I answer them for you. So who wants to go first?